And that there is some fig seed jelly. This here is the creeping fig. Climbs up onto um, just about anything. It seems to like stone and brick and stuff like that, so you might find it growing on somebody's house. And uh, I'm just like on the side of a railroad track here, <laughs> trying not to get hit by anything. And uh, I just have been noticing them on the ground here. So they've uh, been falling from this wall here and, and down here into the gravel. So I'm going to collect a few and see what I can do with it. All right, well, I have a whole bowl of them now. And um, honestly, this is something that I didn't really know about. Uh, I didn't realize that figs could even grow from a vine. When you think fig, you think of a fig tree, but figs can grow in a variety of different types of plants, including vines. When you search for creeping figs online, you see a lot of people saying, like, I have creeping figs growing up my house. Can I eat them? And a lot of times the answer is no, these are not edible. However, they are edible, and in fact, the creeping fig is extensively used in Taiwan and in Singapore to make a jello-like dessert called IU jelly. How IU jelly is typically made is that the unripe fruit of the creeping fig is collected, it is turned inside out, then it's dried, and then the seeds are mixed with water to create a gel, it like gels in the water pretty neat. However, there are multiple varieties of the creeping fig, and this is not the type that people use in Taiwan and Singapore. This is something that I have read can also be used to make IU jelly, but you do it a different way. And um, I've been finding a lot of conflicting information about how possible that is. I'm going to show you what I've discovered online, and I'm going to try to make the jelly with these. I don't know if it's going to work. But um, you'll find out with me, and if it doesn't work, or if it does, either way, I'm going to, uh, later in the video, attempt to make the jelly using a dried version from Taiwan. Okay, so we're going to get that jelly either way, but I want to see if I can do it with this particular variety. I want to give a shout out to eattheweeds.com because uh, the recipe that I'm going to follow to try to make Ayu jelly out of this particular one is from that site. Uh, it was the only source where I can find information on how to make Ayu jelly using this particular type and not the ones uh, from Taiwan. When I cut these open, by the way, it, it releases a smell that is kind of interesting. It's kind of like... Um, rose petals and bean sprouts. Now the website Eat the Weeds says to take these fruits to put them inside a bag like a porous bag like a muslin bag I guess and then squeeze them to get the liquid out and that liquid can be used to make a gel. I'm gonna cut them in half just to make it a little bit easier to get liquid out I'm also cutting them open to make sure there aren't any bugs inside, because that is something that bugs like to do. So I couldn't find a porous bag, but I did find some cheesecloth. So I think that will probably work just as well. I wrap it up well enough anyway. So can I get liquid out? <laughs> I don't really have high hopes here, but let's uh, let's see what happens. If this doesn't work, I have a couple other ideas, but I don't see how <sighs> I don't see how you can get liquid from these fruits. There's just not a lot of um, at least not this way. I mean, you could juice them. Okay, I give up. That, that There's no way that this is going to produce enough liquid to do anything with it. I mean, maybe if you collected, like, a ton of these, then you can squeeze out something if you had, like, a hydraulic press or something. But, um, yeah, this is not going to work. 
there's no way that I'm going to get any liquid out of here. I mean, maybe I'll get like a couple drops that will just get absorbed into the cheesecloth, but it's these things are just like way too dry. There's no way that I'm going to get liquid out of here. I put my figs in this pan and added just enough water to cover it. I'm going to bring it to a boil and see if maybe I can extract some of the liquid on the inside if I, uh, if I do this. So let's give it a shot. And yeah, um, I guess this is YouTube, so I kind of have to. Um... Dry mouth. It tastes like dry mouth and um, flower petals. Well then, so the uh, figs are done. I put them in here for maybe like 15, 20 minutes and um, boiled out some liquid. You can see how dark it is in there. Very dark figgy liquid. And actually it smells pretty good. It smells like flower petals and cinnamon for some reason. So now that I've done this, I let it cool down a little bit and I'm going to now try to squeeze out some liquid into this bowl through the, uh, through the cheesecloth. And I think if there is any kind of gelling agent inside these things, it's in that water. So let's see if, uh, if this will work. Uh, as you can see, the liquid is coming out. It looks pretty clean too. So there you have it. It is, uh, maybe like a half cup of liquid, and it's still a liquid. Um, it's not a gel, but I'm gonna put this in the fridge and see if it firms up. Okay, it has been 24 hours and... Mm. Hmm. Well, it looks like it did not turn into a gel. It, uh, it did get a little bit thicker, I'll give it that, and it did change to be some sort of horrible beige color, but it did not turn into a gel. Not, not even close. It does have like a vague cinnamon flavor and a vague like floral flavor to it. But it mostly tastes like astringent vegetable. So yeah, that um, didn't work. But I think that's just because this variety of this species of fig just doesn't work. The guy that I saw on Eat the Weeds, um, it, it says that you can do this uh, if you squeeze it out of a bag. There, there's no way that I was going to get that much liquid out of what I got. Maybe if you pick them fresh off the vine, it's going to be juicy enough to do that, but I don't really think so. So, um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to work with these. Not the way I did it, not by squeezing it in a bag. Uh, you need to use the proper species, or not even proper species, the proper variety of this species, which you get in Taiwan. So I'm going to order some of those online, and uh, we're going to try to do this the proper way. I'll be back. All right, I am back in New York City, and I got myself some creeping fig seeds. Uh, these are the Taiwanese variety, and this should work. I mean, it is sold specifically to make the jelly, as you can see on that that photo there, so um, it better work. Uh, this is something that is not super easy to find. I had to order this online. Uh, I've got several Asian supermarkets in my neighborhood, and I wasn't able to find this at any of them. Uh, I did find this, though. At Asian supermarkets, this is pretty easy to find. It is IU jelly in a can. However, looking at the ingredients, I don't think there's any actual IU jelly in here. It says IU powder as an ingredient, but then in parentheses after that, it says uh, carrageen, which is a gum, and then konjac, which is a root that is used to make a jelly. 
and then potassium chloride, sodium, blah blah blah, mel maltodextrin, sodium citrate, all everything after that is just like preservatives and stuff. So um, yeah, IU jelly in the can, I don't think actually has IU jelly in it, even though it says it on it, and in the ingredients it says IU jelly, uh, the actual ingredients of that IU jelly powder are not IU jelly. I'm sure this is uh, a close approximation, I guess, if you want to get your jelly in a can. But if you want to do this legit, you gotta get those seeds. Okay, in this bowl, I'm going to place uh, five cups of water. The water that I'm using, by the way, is Fiji water. And that is a tip that I got from the YouTube channel Angel Wong's Kitchen. Shout out to Angel Wong's Kitchen. And the reason why she says you need to use this is because you need minerals in the water in order for the seeds to do their magic. And I've seen a few comments online of people who have tried doing this but weren't able to, like it wasn't gelling. So my guess is that uh, tap water is not the way to go. I don't know if it needs to be Fiji water, but I think tap water is uh, it's processed too much. Maybe the fluoride that's added to it or something, it doesn't, it doesn't work. I'm gonna take half a cup of the seeds and place them inside this muslin bag here. Uh, it actually seems like a lot of seeds. I don't think you need this many, but this is what the, uh, the bag suggests. All right, everybody in the pool. The seeds get massaged into the water for five, ten minutes. So you massage the seeds like this, and that's gonna get all the good stuff out of them and into the water. You can see the water is now turning like a yellowish kind of color. And also I'm feeling like a lot of, um, like a slime sort of sensation. So whatever kind of mucilaginous stuff is on the seeds that is now coming out. Are you excited? Are you excited about IU jelly? It's not ready yet though, you gotta wait. I know. Okay, so the uh, liquid here has gotten very dark, as you can see. I think that this bag here wanted me to use a lot more than I needed to. That way you use more of their product, maybe. <laughs> because uh, that seemed like a lot of seeds. I don't think it needed to be a half a cup. You could probably get away with a fourth cup um, with the same amount of water. So this now is gonna go in the fridge. That way it can set up. So while I'm waiting for the IU jelly to firm up, I'm going to make a flavoring for it. So we're gonna put two cups of water in this pot and turn that on. I'm not sure if it really needs to be Fiji water, but might as well, might as well. I already spent $8 on water and might as well use it, right? I will also add half a cup of sugar and bring that to a boil. Okay, we're boiling here, so I'm going to uh, turn this off. And uh, Next, I want to flavor this syrup here. So uh, there's a few things that I have around. I have a, uh, a pear, an uh, Asian pear. I've got uh, bale fruit. I've got uh, spiny gourd. And I've got a Meyer lemon. Uh, I think I'll use the Meyer lemon. Let's try to do it the chefy way and squeeze it through my fingers so I don't get any seeds in there. All right, so it worked. You know, honestly, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I checked it after a half an hour and it was still liquid, but uh, I put it in for another 30 minutes and we've got Ayu jelly. So what you're supposed to do is cut it up into like little chunks. So there we go. It, it worked really well. Actually, that's kind of like jello. Only one thing that's cool with this is that it's, well, it's a vegan jello. One thing with 
figs is that there might be some wasp parts in it, just in the nature of how figs are grown. But if you don't think about that, vegan. It's vegan. So I'm going to try this first just uh, on its own. The flavor isn't incredible, but it's not bad. It kind of tastes like a weak black tea. Maybe like, not a great quality black tea, but like, you know, some weak Lipton tea. Um, not a strong taste whatsoever. I think that that would work really well to take other flavors in, because you're not really getting like any strong planty flavor or anything from the fig seeds. But the more notable thing about that is that the, uh, the texture of it is like Jello. It's maybe a little softer, but it's still firmed up pretty well. Okay, so I'm gonna pour in my syrup. And how they do this in Taiwan is they usually will serve it with ice. I have a hunch what this is gonna taste like just because I've tried both parts on their own. But uh, together with the ice, let's see. It's good. That's actually really refreshing and nice. Having the ice cubes in there is nice. It's nice and cold. Uh, it's kind of like having like um like a bubble tea sort of sort of drink. I actually haven't eaten gelatin in uh, a very very long time. Not since I was a wee child, and uh, that's because I cut out eating gelatin uh, when I realized that it wasn't really vegetarian. It's made with uh, bone tissue. But uh, this is kind of like bringing back that, that sense memory, that, that texture and that flavor. It really reminds me of eating Jello as a child. I could see some use just uh, as a vegetarian uh, Jello substitute. I think if you were to add flavoring to that before it sets up, then you're, you're making like regular American Jello. But uh, with the syrup added to it like that, it's it's good. It's really nice. You get a nice flavor to it as well as that texture and um, I would totally make this again. That's uh, that's nice. So I think that's about it for the Creeping Fig. This has been a very interesting adventure. Originally when I saw one of these on the street in New Orleans I did not realize what it was and then in researching it I've discovered so much about it. This was fun. I hope you enjoyed watching it and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I would like to give a very big shout out to AltPod and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how I manage to keep this channel going, so if you enjoy what I've been doing, take a look at the link in the description below. Uh, I also sell t-shirts. This is one of them. This is the Mandrake Root shirt, which is uh, available on my website. Link to that in the description as well. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.